Welcome back dear students for standard 6 general science. We will be doing with natural resources, air, water and land module 3. I am Ms. Jagjeet Kaur. Students, before beginning with this module, let us recall what we have studied in module 2. We studied that water is life. That means we cannot live without water. Water is a universal solvent. Water is an important fluid for sustaining life on earth. Water exists in three states that is solid state, liquid state and gaseous state. The cyclic movement of water from the atmosphere to the earth and back to the atmosphere through various process is called as water cycle. Even water cycle is also known as hydrologic cycle. There are four steps in water cycle. The steps are evaporation, condensation, precipitation, collection, runoff. Conservation of water is needed with immediate effect to sustain life on earth. Before beginning with the module, let us first discuss with the learning objectives. At the end of this module, you all will be understanding that land is a natural resource, the different layers of the soil, how the soil is formed, that is the process of soil formation, soil erosion and its causes, and soil conservation. Students, in our previous two modules, we have studied about air and water. Now we will be learning about land. So let's begin. As we all know that land is essential natural resource, both for the survival and prosperity of humanity and also for the maintenance of all the terrestrial ecosystems. Land is seen in the form of stones, big rocks, and soil. It is not flat everywhere. In some places, land is hilly. All the terrestrial animals, including man, live on land. Some terrestrial animals dig burrows for their shelters in the ground. Means they use land for fulfilling their needs. That means land is used to fulfill the needs of all the living organisms. We also use land for farming and building houses and roads. Plants and animals that grow on land, we make use of them. And also the minerals, the crude oil and natural gas obtained from the land are very important for us. It means that land is an important resource for all the living organisms on the earth. Students, now let us understand about the different layers of soil. As we all know that soil is a thin layer of loose material covering the earth's surface. It is composed of both organic and inorganic materials. The soil is found in layers which are arranged during the formation of soil. These layers are called as horizons. That is a sequence of layers is the soil profile. The layers of soil can be easily observed by their color and size of particles. The main layers of the soil are topsoil, subsoil and the parent rock. Students, the parent rock is also called as bedrock. Each layer has its own characteristics. These features of the layer of soil play a very important role in determining the use of the soil. Soil that has developed three layers is the mature soil. It takes many years under a favorable condition for the soil to develop its three layers. Students, even at some places, the soil contains only two layers. Such soil is immature soil. So now students, let us understand the horizons of the soil that is 
the different layers of soil one by one. Students, before starting, let us understand which are the horizons in these layers. Humus and the topsoil is also known as the horizon A. Immature soil, subsoil is known as the horizon B. Layer of soil and small rocks and bedrock is the horizon C. So students, we begin with horizon A that is the topsoil. Now horizon A or topsoil is also called as the humus layer. Humus layer consists of decomposed material and organic matter. This is the reason the topsoil has a dark brown color. The humus makes the topsoil soft, porous to hold enough air and water. In this layer, the seeds germinate and the roots of the plants grow. Many living organisms like earthworms, millipedes and centipedes Bacteria and fungi are found in this layer of soil. Now we go ahead with horizon B that is the immature soil or the subsoil. Just below the topsoil lies another layer called subsoil or horizon B. It is comparatively harder and compact than topsoil. Now students, it is lighter in color than the topsoil because there is less humus in this layer. This layer is less organic but rich in minerals brought down from the topsoil. It contains metal salts, especially iron oxide in a large proportion. Farmers often mix horizon A and horizon B. That is, farmers mix topsoil and subsoil when they plow their fields. Now the last horizon that is horizon C. The bedrock is also known as the parent rock and it lies just below the subsoil. Now students, it contains no organic matter and made up of stones and rocks. So it is very hard. This layer represents a transition zone between the earth's bedrock and horizon A and horizon B. Students, in our previous slide, we studied about the different layers of soil and in that we studied that the layers of soil are formed during the soil formation. So now, students, let us begin to understand how the soil is formed. So the formation of soil is an extremely long process taking up to an average of a thousand years. Soil formation takes place in the following ways. That is, big rocks break down into smaller rocks by continuous action of wind and rain. It takes many years for these rocks to break down into smaller rocks. Rocks are mainly broken by the process called weathering. Now students, weathering is the process by which rocks are broken down into smaller pieces. A number of natural force called agents work to break down the parent rock into tiny particles of soil. These agents include wind, water, the sun's heat and plants and animals. These pieces get further broken down to form sand and silt and ultimately into finer particles and the process continues. Now student, your silt is nothing but a fine sand, clay or other material which is carried by the running water. This process is very slow. It takes thousands of years to form a just one centimeter layer of soil. These fine particles form the top layer of the soil. Students, as we studied in our previous slide that soil is formed by the weathering of rocks. So, the weathering of rocks is of three types. That is, the first one is physical weathering, the second is chemical weathering and the third is biological weathering. Now students, let us study these weatherings in detail. 
so we begin with physical weathering physical weathering is the geological process when rocks get fragmented into smaller particles without changing the chemical composition of rocks this primarily happens due to the fluctuating temperature fluctuating means it goes up and down temperatures causing the rocks to break apart now the next is the chemical weathering chemical weathering is the erosion of rocks and other surface materials caused due to the chemical reactions the rocks react with substances in the atmosphere such as moisture air water etc the resulting substance has a different chemical composition than the rock from which it is formed now the third weathering is the biological weathering biological weathering is a process of disintegration of rocks due to the actions of living organisms that is animals plants microbes etc for example like when a plant grows in the fissure of a rock now students fissure is nothing but a long narrow opening or we can say a line of breakage made by the cracking or splitting especially it is found in rocks and its roots exert pressure on the rock forcing into a break apart even microbes produce organic material that causes weathering now students let us study about soil erosion now soil erosion is a process in which the top fertile layer of soil is lost due to the soil erosion the soil becomes less fertile the top layer of soil is very light which is easily carried away by wind and water so students we can define soil erosion as the removal of top soil by the natural forces is known as soil erosion now students as we studied that what is soil erosion in our previous slide now let us study about the different causes or the different factors which causes soil erosion so the various agents or the various factors like wind water deforestation overgrazing by cattle etc causes soil erosion so now let us study various factors of soil erosion so the first factor is wind when strong winds blow the top soil along with the organic matter is carried away by the wind this happens more often when the land is not covered with grass or plants such conditions are very common in desert and semi desert regions where strong winds blow very frequently the next factor is water when it rains in the hilly areas and the soil gets washed away towards the plains the running water deposits the mineral rich soil in the river bed and over the years this deposition of soil can change the course of the river this can lead to the floods which cause the destruction of life and property water erosion leads to loss of agriculture potential the third factor is the overgrazing when cattle are allowed to graze on the same field repeatedly all the available grass including the roots are eaten by them this makes the top soil vulnerable to wind and flowing water leading to soil erosion the last factor is deforestation humans have taken land from the forest to cultivate in order to feed the ever increasing population and to build houses industries etc cutting down of trees on a large scale for these purposes is deforestation the roots of the trees hold the soil together thus preventing the soil getting uprooted 
when large areas of the forest are cleared the top soil gets eroded by wind and the flowing water students prevention of soil erosion is also called as conservation of soil the soil erosion can be prevented by the following ways the first one is afforestation planting new trees and plants is afforestation we leave because plants leave if the plants die all living things will also die thus whenever trees are cut down new trees should be planted planting trees in the hilly areas are most effective for conservation of soil the next is crop rotation between harvesting one crop and planting the next crop the fields lie bare that means there is a time period when the farm land does not have any crops during this period the farmer either grows grass or grows other crops to prevent soil from erosion this helps the soil to regain the lost minerals the next is terrace farming in hilly areas farming is done by cutting steps on the slopes of the hills this slows down the flow of water and soil removed from one step is deposited on the next step thus the soil is never completely lost students this is known as the terrace farming the next is building dams dams are built to prevent floods which not only damage the crops but also wash away the top soil so by building dams also we can conserve our soil now students this was the end of module 3 now let us summarize what we have learned in this module land is essential natural resource both for the survival and prosperity of humanity and for the maintenance of all the terrestrial animals land is used for fulfilling the needs of living organisms minerals crude oil and natural gas is obtained from earth's crust that is land the layers of soil can be easily observed by their color and size of particles the main layers of the soil are top soil sub soil and the parent rock here the parent rock is also called as bed rock layer of soil play a very important role in determining the use of the soil soil forms continuously but slowly from the gradual breakdown of rocks through weathering the removal of top soil by the natural forces is known as soil erosion and the prevention of soil erosion is also called as conservation of soil now students you can answer these questions what will happen if microbes in the soil get destroyed explain with the help of a diagram how soil is formed how the soil can be conserved what are the causes of soil erosion thank you dear students